So welcome uh, for our speech. Uh, we are from Look Studios. There's quite a few members of the team um, present today. Um, we are the founders. Chris Haas, Andrea Block is my name. Uh, Marco Wiltz is uh, matte painting, did a lot of matte paintings and 3D models just in general for all of the type of uh, works we did, especially for the Grand Budapest Hotel. He's the expert today on all this stuff. Um, so we'll just give you a short overview of what we usually do. Uh, this is the fourth speech I'm, uh, I'm giving today, no, the past two days, so please be uh, gentle on me, maybe I'm uh, mixing a few things up. But uh, just in general, we are placed in Stuttgart, visual effects company, doing also animation. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're doing efficient, high-tech and well-designed effects and animation as much as we can, and we are allowed to on different projects. Can we go on? I'm sorry. Uh, we are learning every day and becoming smarter, um, especially on an in-house product that we are doing for the pipelining. Uh, Ralph Seji is our programmer. He's uh, doing the software development for very fast feedback and good overview uh, and helping us a lot with asset management and everything like that. Uh, we try to be very lean, um, which means lean management combined with uh, well-educated core team. And we try to be very agile. Small is sometimes very good for that. So we try to be very flexible in size uh, of um, team build and growing, uh, working with a growing network of selected artists from a custom tailored team for the special needs of the projects, depending on if it's more you know, 3D modeling or if it's more CG um, environments or more animation. Um, as I said, we're in the hometown of um, FMX, Stuttgart. It's the region in Germany some of you might know, know that, is uh, famous for its innovation just in general, not only for Brezels and Spätzle, uh, but also for art and design and architecture, and uh, it has a very powerful economy. Um, now it's also a visual effects and animation hotspot, uh, I think due to funding, but also very much due to the very good schools that we have around the area. So those are some of the projects that we have been showing at the FMX. Uh, they're from the past two years. White House Down is a big, big blockbuster from Roland Emmerich. Um, we have worked on that and did about six minutes, mostly full CG shots, where the helicopters are flying over Washington. Uh, then today we are showing you a little bit more about the Grand Budapest Hotel. And we just finished this morning a talk about Manu the Swift, which is a full feature animation uh, where we did the script writing and development of the full design and everything, and we hope to present it in cinemas next year. Um, so let's get started with the Grand Budapest Hotel, and before that, we'll just give you a short overview of uh, all of our work. Oh, kein Ton. Hm, ist doof. Dann geh einfach weiter zum nächsten. So we skip the show reel, so we're saving a little bit of time and we go directly into Wes Anderson's show. Um, it was a little hard, this is why we took the title, Into the Mind of Wes Anderson. Some of you might know the title from another movie with another name, but just in general, getting a grip on his artistic vision was uh, the biggest challenge of the project, just in general. Where's Bear with Apple? None of your goddamn business! I'm gonna blast your candy ass once and for all right now. The end of the beginning has begun. The sad finale played off key on a broken down saloon piano in the outskirts of a forgotten ghost town. Just 
you be in farewell to the wounded Piper Boy. What's that? Oh, holy shit, you got it! I'd rather jump off this cliff right now than go back to fucking prison. So that was the short making of of the Grand Budapest Hotel. And please welcome Marco Veltz uh, from our team, team. He's going to tell you a lot about the matte painting and design process for the show. So a warm welcome from me. Um, I'm sorry for the delay. We just finished the presentation right now. So it might be mixed up a little. So I hope it will be interesting anyway. Uh, the, with the Grand Budapest Hotel, we had a interesting um, company constellation. We had a cooperation with LookFX from uh, LA, and the deal was that uh, LookFX they did work on former Wes Anderson projects already, and so they knew how to talk with Wes and how to understand his his design language. So they sent it up uh, their supervisor uh, Gabriel Sanchez, who worked on former Wes Anderson projects and uh, producer Jenny over here. And we were sitting in our Lux studios. We are using the same pipeline, the same machines. It's the same office. We just <laughs> you and we used the same team like at Great Budapest Hotel. We just split it in the middle set. Half of them are working now for the payroll of Lux. Half of them are working now for the payroll of Look. But at the end, we are sitting in the same office, doing the same work, working each other together. So it was a true Stuttgart project, which we did here together. Yeah, um, the Budapest Hotel it was um, a co also a co-production with uh, Studio Babelsberg, that's why lots of the sets were built there. It was funded by the German Federal Film Fund and as well as the, from the MFG from Baden-Württemberg. So, um, uh, we did uh, lots of different uh, styles of shot. We have miniatures, sh uh, we have miniatures, we have to work with uh, models, uh, we have to do digital matte paintings, 3D set extensions, snowflakes, fog and atmosphere, and lots of small comp work which you hardly can see in the movie if you don't know what they were. Lots of, um, uh, yeah, lots of hidden work inside. Um, Yeah, let's start with the style. As uh, you may know, uh, the Budapest Hotel won several uh, Academy Awards, also called Oscar, and one of them was for the best production design. Um, and we, uh, uh, we as a uh, visual effects team, we had to add our work to the special style and design language from West. So it's, we had a little part in this, uh, uh, in this Oscar trophy, so what was a very cool thing. So the, the world in which the Grand Budapest takes place, it's, it's a fictive world, it's a fantasy world. It's very close based to reality, but uh, it's not real reality, it's a little parallel reality. Um, but it's uh, based, especially in its style, uh, in reality, and especially in the Art, in art Nouveau or Jugendstil style, as you may know, uh, a strong art style which was de uh, developed in Germany and France, France around the last uh, change of uh, of the Sekle, um, um around 19th century, and uh, it's something which is called a total art style. This means it's an art style which you found in architecture, in interior design, exterior design, graphic art. It's a global style which. Uh, which uh, intercepting many parts of, of design life. And that's what Wes wanted to place most of uh, its word. 
The Budapest Hotel takes part in three time zones. First time zone is 1932. Uh, the second part is uh, in 1968. And the third time zone is 1985. So we have the same sets, but they are changing over the time in different styles, uh, uh, how it's modern to the time where they take place in. So um, let's go to uh, locations, uh, as I mentioned. Yes? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's on this video because we didn't have time to check it out. So. Uh, we can yeah, do it later. Okay, so uh, uh, the Budapest Hotel you've seen with this pink, this pinkish style, uh, where hotels in reality, which look closely like a Budapest Hotel, especially the Palace Bristol Hotel in uh, Karlsbad in, uh, in the Czech Republic. This was a strong uh, influence for the whole design of the hotel. And um, as you see, there are many small design parts in like the, this little pinkish cake box. Uh, we, we have strong Art Nouveau elements in it and you find this strong style through the whole movie. In every, uh, in every small part you find there's a this strong design language. Um, so it's not fantasy. This, for example, is a real a real building uh, in Germany, and we just added it to the hotel, uh, to the model of the hotel, for example. This is also interesting, this also in Karlsbad, and this strange deer standing on the rock found its way in many parts of the movie, for example, in a background painting which is hanging in the hotel and also on the poster of the movie, and it also found its way in a, the intro sequence we'll see later. This here, for example, is a model which goes directly from the model shooting to the movie. Um, as I mentioned before, many sets were built in Babelsberg, but the biggest set, the, the inner hall of a hotel, is the Görlitzer Warmhaus. Uh, it's in Saxony in Germany. It's an old Art Nouveau Jugendstil uh, warehouse. Uh, it closed it do its doors uh, some years ago, but we uh, relighted uh, its cool interior again for the Grand Budapest Hotel. And any one of you who have seen the movie will recognize the interior hall of the hotel. That's how it was when it was still open as a warehouse, and that's how it looks in the movie. Um, yeah. So. Um, Just need to press that. Yeah. Let's have a look at the intro sequence. Um, this is for the model shooting. We've got several elements, foreground and background, and uh, hotel on, uh, on a model. And uh, this was a previous at the beginning, and yeah. Here see, we see the hotel through different styles through the time. We'll come to it later. And see, we also had to try lots of different ver style versions. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now I have to find out where I'm in the presentation. Okay. Uh, with here uh, is the model of a hotel, and the model went directly into the movie. We didn't have to do a digital Z extension or stuff. We had to use it like it was shot in a model, non in a perspective way. We are always looking very flat on the hotel. That's a special kind of Wes Anderson's uh, visual style. We're looking very uh, always in, in a flat direction on the picture. Um, this, for, for example, is an, uh, the entrance of the hotel. You see, you see with the orange colors, it's uh, not in the 1930s anymore. It's now in the 1968 with a strong orange color style on it. And with it is also uh, another mix-up of a of 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 Z. Um, 
This, for example, is um, yeah, we in the, in the year 1900, 19, 1985, and the bathroom is already uh, very broken and uh, covered with dirt, and we have to, uh, to dress it back to the, back to the 1968. Uh, okay, I need some brains because I... The first idea was to help someone, yeah. and then it works. Die richtige Präsentation? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay. We Könntet ihr noch mal kurz starten? So, we'll just um, try to get it right, because at the moment we're just seeing one video after the other, <laughs> and uh, we're missing the, the images in between. So, just please go back to the, to the presentation. I think you're just... Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. So, we know the model, so we go to sets and models. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we are. Back. So back again. <laughs> this is a small clip of stuff which was uh, of the model shooting. So uh, now we have. Uh, for us, it was very difficult at the beginning to find out what is what is what what is in the brain of Wes Anderson. I don't say that we still know it yet what's inside, but uh, I found. Uh, with uh, words from him, uh, I hardly can pronounce in the particular brand of artificiality. It's, uh, I can't say this word correct. What I like to use is an old-fashioned one. Okay, uh, what does it mean to us? I don't know. I'm, uh, <laughs> but it means he was using, he wants to build models in an old analog style, stylish way. And that's what he did at Studio Babelsberg. He built a lots of models, uh, rock formation, rock formation with with trees on it, uh, with, a, with a trail in front of it. I see also based from reality, this trail uh, really exists at some other place, and so he also integrated it into, the, uh, into his models. With are also models which uh, were built in Babelsberg from a snow chasing race. And what's interesting, you see, everyone can see, they look like models. They don't look real. And uh, the as far as I knew, the reason why we were building models in the old time of movie making was to get it real, as most real as you can. And that's what we thought, okay, we get here some models and we have to do, extend them and to make this model look real. But we found out later that this, was, this wasn't what Wes Anderson wanted. So, um, let's go to a hotel. The hotel is the main character in the movie and we have some nice uh, layout uh, plans and paintings from Studio Babelsberg. And as we see here, always we're always looking from the front direction to the hotel, not from interesting movie-like perspectives, always from the front. And it's a very huge model, as you can see here, way, way uh, building it. Do you remember the, the name of the color he was using for the facade? Yeah, <laughs> we, have, we have a lot <laughs> of different names for the for the colors, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, as I said before, it was hard for us to find now what he wanted. I, in my first week on the movie, I got this picture. I said, okay, this is the previous, and, and I had some free time, and uh, it took some time before the production was started. I said, okay, good. I start doing, beginning the matte painting of the shot, and started uh, to paint in backgrounds and mountains and stuff like that. And uh, sometime Gabriel come, the supervisor came over and said, oh, nice that you're working on it, but stop it, it will keep artificial. So at the end, we, we put it away. At the end, I found out, okay, we'll have to use the painted, the hand-painted background from the set with the uh, hand-built uh, foreground rocks and the hotel on it with all looks artificial, but that's what Anderson wanted to have it. Uh, that was a new experience. Um, the hotel has, as I told before, different styles and colors through the time. Like we see here, the color palette we had in 1930s and 1968. And uh, it was difficult, especially for our compass, who had to dress the set in different colors, uh, to find out which color was meant. So we had, uh, and especially if the supervisor is American, uh, when he says lavender, 
we say, okay, lavender, what does he mean with lavender? If he says purple, okay, what does he exactly mean with purple? Or more pinkish, less pinkish, more purple, less purple, a little more lavender, and so on. And it, was, it became very difficult, and I think we were trying around two or three weeks to find out what color tone he really <laughs> is. And the production sent us with little boxes of cakes Our said, okay, Biscuits. this is exactly the tone which, which we want. Please set, uh, give us exactly this uh, tone here. And again, this, uh, the Dion it and a yellow tone for the 70 years. So, um, yeah, we went through this style guide and we're trying around. And uh, I think the, the compass were trimming in orange or in yellow because we are retracing the whole set with yellow and pinkish new stripes. Yeah, uh, interesting experience for, experience for every one of us. Here again, the, the hotel shot. This here is uh, the layout we got for the 1968. And so we had to, uh, we only got a model from this time area. And so we have to retrace this model in a matte painting, uh, adding some little 3D to uh, get this 1968 style. As you see, it's still the hotel, but it's completely different. Um, Uh, but we've got uh, all the colors in what, uh, which Wes wanted to have. Here again on the left side, you see uh, an original uh, building, which was dressed up with the flags and stuff, and we have to dress it in pinkish lavender with gold stripes and stuff on it, like you see on the on the right side, on the on the right side of the picture. Yeah, we have now we have here a little making of clip of different shots. I don't know which. Ah, okay. Now we see something of, um, of the models. Funny thing is, uh, Wes always wanted uh, us to have it artificial, but at the end he still wanted to have some little frost and some little snow and some little fog in front of the camera. So, uh, yeah, we also went uh, <laughs> in the different direction again. So, again, okay, here's the, here's the bathroom I told before. This is the original set, the old one, and we go back from the 1985 back to the 1968, which you see in the strong uh, color palette. At really can tell you it makes you crazy if you pick with colors and look at them the whole day. This is the video, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here is the Gabelsberg station. It's also a big set, uh, which we've seen before, also built as a, uh, as a real set, as you can see. And um, When I first got this shot, I said, okay, good. Uh, I just got the instruction, okay, put this set on a mountain and put a background on it and, and send it out. And as I'm normally used to work in visual effects, uh, I say, okay, good, let's do it movie-like, let's do it, uh, uh, make it a little theater light uh, style. And my first version was this. And we sent it out to Wes and said, oh, nice try, but we don't want to do a lot of rings. Um, please do it different. Okay, good. No lot of rings. I said, okay, good, let's try it more in the realistic style. This was the second version. And um, I also had to find out, okay, we don't go realistic style. Um, we go artificial. And so we did several inter uh, iterations until we ended up with something like this with lots of fog and at the end it's covered with noise and uh, even the flag on the top of it is stop motion animation. It's now simulation, it's really a stop motion filmed flag which they had to put inside and still looking flat now uh, rocks coming in the foreground to separate it from the background. So yeah, uh, interesting exp experience as, as, as I said. So let's have a look. Okay, we've seen this here before. I can skip this video. Iso rocks, okay, and also something we, have, we are faced in a matte painting department as, okay, what does he want? Like again, we're looking directly on the model and okay, he does he first try, we tried it with rocks when we mixed up 
rocks with dirty eyes also wrong and we did it with very white eyes and uh, I'm sorry but I don't have a finished shot at the end uh, it was somewhere hidden in the in a big dark hole of our backup server um, <laughs> so I only can present <laughs> the matte paintings but we went uh, as you can think more artificial more white the shot again something with some soldiers standing in the background which we had to extend and uh, the same game again tr finding out what Wes wanted. Interesting is if you look here you see in the background there are really painted mountains like in a like in theater and I was happy but we are, we are allowed to put with mountains out but they don't have to extend painted mountains and we could use uh, more photorealistic mountains background but at the end uh, after trying around with rocks and ice we ended up again with very foggy, very noisy uh, shot, also hidden in our backup server. Sorry for that. Yeah, and uh, our classical matte painting, just adding um, a bunker to the scene. Okay, so let's go to the chasing sequence. That's a very interesting sequence, which is mi mixing everything up. Uh, real filming, stop motion, animation, models, CG, everything you can imagine. And while we are working on the shots, uh, the guy who's doing the stop motion animation, he, is, we was, he was still working at Babelsberg and it took a really long time until we got all of his shots. I think he was working f months on all this stop, uh, uh, stop motion stuff. This is also a good example where you can see that it's a good mix between artificial and, and you know, real effects because he really paid attention to the traces of the ski skiers, you know. Uh, it's not stop motion only, but he wanted to see the dent of the skis in the snow and he wanted to have some snowflakes and the right velocity, adding some extra frost and fog on top of it to, to, to get the feel for the, for the coldness. I've, I've got I've got a clip. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So here is an example of a storyboard which we got from the sequence. And here, like you've seen just before, uh, this was, was the clip. What we got, we got lots of clips. And uh, we found out, okay, it's uh, not possible to put one of his clip behind each other, but to get a long racing trace. Okay, so what to do? Uh, we had to do it secretly in CG, because Wes shouldn't know, but we were doing it in CG, because he wanted to see the models. And uh, so we had to cut out the trees and stuff, because no one had photographed them, because all, all everyone was thinking, okay, we're using the the film model anyway, we don't use reference pictures, so we had to put them in a row, or put artificial snow on it, and, uh, uh, and make it look like it was the real, the, the set. And so I don't know if he found out at the end, uh, but he was happy with it. Also again, with the ski ramp here. I can't remember the reason why, but we, uh, we ended also up doing this in CG at the end. Um, yeah, again, in the foreground, there's a model, a uh, picture of a model, extended matte painting in the background, and here the, the ice, some pictures of a Z. Yeah, and here also, as we, far as we are here still in the V-Ray room, we did uh, a little 3D work too on this shot, <laughs> on this show. So, for example, for this year, the motorcycle sequence, we did all the snow and ice in the foreground, and the fences on the side of it, and as I talked before, uh, at the end, Wes wanted to have some uh, ice on the camera lens and more snow and more fog on it. And it was okay we, we, that, that we did with in CG, so he was not a complete uh, enemy of CG, but uh, yeah. Not for his models. Not for his models, yeah. So. <coughs> So I think um, uh, we rushed through it. Let's look what we have here at the end. For, uh, clip. Ah.
of our presentation. I think one or two clips clips were, were missed, lost somewhere inside of this machine. So, any questions till now? Any questions? It's okay. Like, how difficult was it? Like, you, you mentioned already a little bit, like, to work with this kind of... Um, let's say, non-realistic style, and like, it seemed that it took a lot of iteration processes. I must say for me and most of the team, because we worked only on, uh, mostly on realistic movies, and our approach was always to be as realistic as possible. It was hard to go back to, uh, if you work as an artist, you may know you, you want to go as realistic as you can, you put all the energy in the shot, and when uh, someone hits a break and says, hey, stop there, stop there, we have to go back. We have to reduce what you're doing. We have to do it more, more flat, more artificial. And you always, always have in their background, oh my God, some people may think that we are not good artists, that we are not going, doing good shots because they don't look like uh, big perspectives and foreground, background, and whatever you have in a, in, a, in a mighty shot, that it looks so flat and so artificial and everyone could still see at the end that there are models in it. And... I, I know it was a problem for me and for many of my colleagues. So uh, it was good that we had Gabriel, uh, the supervisor, at our hand who has, who has done this process, process before with us, and he could tell us, okay, it's okay, like, but we go this direction, not the usual direction. Uh, this was a really big help in translating the language to us. And even for, for me, I, I, un I didn't understand understood the movie until I've seen him it in the, in the cinema. So it uh, was working like in a black box. I don't know what the hell we are doing here. I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, Bess is um, very precisely in his, um, his thinkings what he wants to change sometimes, in, even with the actors, for example. So we had all together around 400 shots, over 400 shots, I think, for the show. And we had lots of shots, for example, where he wanted to retime just short elements of the actors, or so somebody got feedback like uh, make the eye blinking um, of the left actor uh, eight frames earlier, for example. So that even this kind of shots um, were in the show. It was like stop animating yeah. real actors, <laughs> you know? It was faking models to become a painting and then we had to stop animate the, the actual cast sometimes for, for having the right timing. Plinking and then of, of the eye or something, exactly. uh, crazy shit like but this. In the uh, situation with two actors side by side, so we had to handle them independently. So the left one here earlier, blinking, the right yeah. one, open mouth, 10 frames earlier. So uh, this kind of shots. Was strange ideas like the inner rooms of a hotel. Uh, oh, I want this part a slightly little more yellow, this part a slightly little more orange, and put where in here a golden line. And uh, with uh, not exact information, it was like trying around uh, for our compass to. Uh, and way got really crazy t sometimes because it was very small pieces of works that we took. We took immense time to get in the right direction what he wanted mm -hmm. at the end. Sometimes nobody will see it. Or yeah, yeah, no yeah. one, if you don't know it, you don't see it, so. They look for the picture, right? They won't. Um, yeah, for yeah. the picture is, so, so after a while, after they got the, all the footage, Wes, I don't know, it was a, uh, walking around a, 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 a flea, market flea market in Paris, market, I think. So, so, uh, Boy I was saw, Apple was the painting. It would be better than what they shoot before. So he took a picture and sent it to us and said, hey, I'm going to exchange the hook of the, where the image is. Nobody cares about this. Life, I would say well, he cares to every detail. We've learned that. He cares to every detail. <laughs> so he exchanges the hook, for example, or, 
um, they shoot at an envelope, the, the envelope at the end, if you know the movie, when they open, open the... That's the last will. That's the last mm. will. Yeah. Um, they shoot it in a different format. And when he watched the edits, he thought, mm, it looks not like a valuable um, envelope. I want a different format. So we exchanged, exchanged uh, the envelope for all the shots to make a different format. And their camera movement and the actor opens the envelope. So we had to put the uh, hands around that and everything just to change the format of the envelope. Mm. And then big experience in this movie project was also we got all in into Mexican cooking because Gabriel was Mexican. <laughs> and when we were working on weekends, that happened sadly. Sometimes he was standing in his small apartment in Stuttgart and cooking beans and bacon the whole night to present as a real good Mexican barbecue the next day. And I don't think that we were so effective on these days. We were working for four days, for four uh, hours in the office while uh, uh, Gabriel was cooking, repairing, and we were sitting, oh my God, it's smelling so grateful. And when we were eating his barbecue, and uh, Gabriel is a guy like this, so he's ordering and putting flesh on uh, meat on the barbecue and after eating we were completely uh, finished so no working again so but it <laughs> was good for the mood in the team uh, yeah <laughs> any more questions no if you don't have any more questions we can solve a little riddle uh, marco has prepared for you <laughs> um, have how many of you have seen the movie by the way oh well, all, all experts. Oh, so I, I think this is a nice uh, little one. What if you can just what press do I have from to press? <laughs> oh, sorry. Can we um, shut it off? You come to us? Okay. Nee. Nein, dann. Es ist wurscht. Wir können nicht das einfach nur spiegeln, oder? Warum macht er das nicht? Hm. Ist so wurscht. Komm, lass. Well, we can see it on the on the screen. Unfortunately, you cannot see it on the screen. So this is why yeah, we'll just... It was a little anecdote about the cat that matter. was uh, running around and, and finally finished on the on the streets. But we can show the showreel of you. Yes, we have to show you. The overall showreel? Yeah, we can show you the overall showreel. But before we do that and finish the ah, talk for today, I would just like to thank the whole team because some of them are here today. There's compositors and 3D builders and all the people that have, you know, done a lot of hand-drawn masking and uh, full CG set extension replacement, even though we were officially not allowed to do that. And um, I think the the, the end uh, result is a very good, good a very good movie, um, and we really enjoyed it uh, when it was opening the Berlinale in 2014. It was out of the regular competition, but we went for Berlin, especially for for seeing the movie. I still remember it was a team viewing session and uh, it was opening Berlinale on the big Bärenpalast and on the other side there was the, the team. And uh, we enjoyed seeing it very much because then we got the whole image, you know. We had everything in combination and we knew exactly what we were working for. And uh, that it collected a few Oscars in the end uh, was of course an extra benefit in, uh, for all of our tedious work. Um, I still remember we had versions going up to 128 and 148 and something like that. And it's not really usual, usual for that kind of shots where you're just combining different elements. So um, please have a look at the showreel, what uh, other type of work we're usually doing. And uh, then we hope that you have a nice rest of the epic. <laughs>
Thank you very much for coming and enjoy the rest of the speeches. Oh, by the way, also if you would like to uh, come and join our team, please come to, re uh, to recruiting uh, session at five today. Uh, we're going to have a short overview of what we are up to for the future and uh, we are happy to see you there. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>